do you feel that like, what, what would you say is the most important piece in designing a game design dog? Uh, that's actually really tricky just because we've only done a couple of them. Welcome to another episode of the Nebulous Entertainment Podcast. Today, Eric and I are going to be discussing GDDs, which in the long term is game design document. First and foremost, we have to give a happy birthday shout out to Connor, the one hit wonder, shows up for one podcast, never comes back again. Uh, <laughs> he is the, well, the, the one of the OG founders of the company. So Con, happy birthday. Um, he's also my brother. It's great. We have a great time together. <laughs> but, all right, let's get into the game design document. So, Eric, you are basically the main driver behind our game design documents. So, let's start with just a high-level overview of what it is and why they're important. Sure. So, uh, for our first game, we did a, a loose one. And it was to basically get all the ideas down for what we wanted the game to be. Uh, so we did our best to try to capture all the mechanics and all the features and all the little things that you try to account for in like items and assets as well. Uh, but we ended up sort of straying away from it just when we were learning what we could and couldn't do. So for this new game we are taking the approach of we know sort of a better way to structure one so we can basically um, let it, I don't know, let it sort of be the guide for what we end up doing for the game. So like the mechanics and the systems and story, all that stuff you want to try to have in the game design document so anyone on the team reading the document would be able to infer what they should be doing next. Right. A game um, design document is to a game as a business plan is to your business. Okay, so, you know, from a high-level overview, there should be an executive summary. Like, you need to know what this game's going to be about, who your audience is, who are you targeting with this game? Because I guarantee you that each game that you build will most likely have, in some way, shape, or form, maybe a little different shift and who your main target is. Um, you know, along those lines, you got to have the gameplay, right? Eric, like you, you've put in just a, a, well, for the first game, you put in more of a detailed one, but right now in the second game, we're in a higher planning mm -hmm. phase, but you put in a detailed description of, you know, what we would expect from a gameplay perspective. Like we have the objectives, right? We have some of the achievements that people would go for and, and go towards in terms of, you know, completion of the game. Um, we talked a little bit about progression as well and, and how players would progress through the game. Like, do you feel that, like, what, what would you say is the most important piece in designing a game design document? Uh, that's actually really tricky just because we've only done a couple of them. But I think the the core is to get the the actual actions of what the player will go through into the document so you want to sort of look at it from an outside perspective as well i try to write them where you will understand if you are playing the game or making the game so obviously that's kind of a really weird way of wording it but essentially i am trying to write my best um, I don't even know what I would call it. Like, I don't know. I'm getting so much. I'm having such a brain fart right now. It's, it's storytelling. Terrible. It's storytelling through your eyes, right? So while you're designing the document from like an actual creator perspective of how you're building the game, you're trying to build it for the players if the player was going through it. Now, there are mechanics, right? You have the mechanics, you have other game elements like the stories you're trying to build, the characters that you're trying to portray and get involved in the game. You have world building, you have level design, locations for 
where the players can expect to go, right? It's like all of this would be included, and you can even go down as far as like assets, so music, uh, you know, different levels of prototyping that you would expect from the company perspective. Because like our team, for example, is broken down into, you know, uh, I guess now it's going to be broken down into like a buddy system for people to work on like UI, mm-hmm. AI, the creative side, the business side, so on and so forth, player movement, right? So with that, you know, we have included that in the GDD for people to see from like a high, higher level as to like what they can expect to dive into, you know, with the body system. Right. And uh, along that, what I've tried to do is create diagrams, like essentially break mechanics and core functions down into their simplest form. So every anything from like a box and some arrows and circles to represent, you know, maybe AI behavior or character behavior, um, all those sorts of things, where you're taking your end result in mind and you're compacting it down into its most basic building blocks. So, you know, I I deal a lot with the art assets and creating the things that you see. But in terms of the way things actually act and behave, that is all done by our engineering group. So when I'm designing for them, I am basically trying to think in the most bare bones way possible how someone like me would understand it who isn't constantly, you know, in the code and in the development side of things like, you know, working and making it behave properly so that i think is a benefit and a detractor because i am uninformed on a lot of the code so when i break things down i might not know the best way to actually develop the behaviors or patterns or diagrams or whatever i'm making but at the same time when i take it down to its simplest form i say okay if i were to be creating this this is where i would start and that can usually bridge to conversations with the engineering team where they say okay well maybe instead of this diagram what if we you know take it this way and start from this direction right so So. that's going to get into my next point is you want to keep it lightweight right because it's going to be changing you're going to have different revisions and to eric's point like he was just talking about well what he thinks might be right at for point A, the engineering team thinks differently. Or, you know, along the lines, somebody else thinks differently, okay? There's going to be revisions with the GDD. You know, you're going to want to keep it to a point where, like, you get you get the points across that you're trying to get across from a high level. But you need to understand, too, that things are going to be changing, right? Especially for, like, where we're at right now with our team. Like, we've gone over it once. Um, actually, yesterday we went over for the first time with the team. We went over it from a high level perspective, and this is because like we allow people to bring ideas to the table. While Eric has given them, he's laid out a foundation as like what you can expect from like A, B, C, D, all the way to you finish the game, right from start to finish. Along the way, there's going to be changes, right? And there might be changes in the beginning. There might be changes at the end, right? So this is why you keep it like while he's like leading the horse to water you know, from this analogy, right? We're still gonna we're still gonna be able to change things <laughs> along the way. You know, you might you might have a few stops before you get to the watering hole. <laughs> I don't know if that's the best analogy, but I mean I think people would get what I'm saying. I think it gets the point across. <laughs> Start talking animals. But I mean <laughs> the game design document is a collaborative piece. It's a collaborative piece. If somebody, if Definitely. you only have one person writing the GDD, you're going to see one perspective, right? So if, if the team has, you know, five, six, seven, ten people, 20 people, one person writes it, well, you're not going to hear necessarily the voices for everybody else through the game. So it's important to make sure that it's collaborative and you evolve together with the project. So... But I think, you know, along those lines, Eric, I think that uh, important piece that you brought up was that you use visuals. Because visuals definitely help you convey the messages that you're trying to to the rest of the team when you're going through the right. game design document. So I would say, like, those are one of the most important pieces. 
while the text is very important in the GDD, right? The visuals, because a lot of people are visual learners, they have a better, you know, an easier way of perceiving what you're trying to get across through the visuals than they would necessarily with like running with the words and then letting their own imagination come up with what they think um, is the outcome. So definitely, definitely. And that's, like I said, it, I break everything down to like basic shapes because I think it's the quickest way for someone to see an idea and be able to like mirror it and match it up to the text that's provided. So, you know, I'll give a little summary of a mechanic or something. And then below I have a diagram that shows basically what I described in words, just in, you know, picture format. Right. And it's so. important to understand that from a character, a story, a progression, a theme, you know, in the GDD, it's important to understand that while you lay a base foundation for what you want to try to get across in the game, they're going to change throughout the game because you might realize once you start making it that like certain things flow well with one another and they flow into one another um, better, right? So like from from a high level standpoint, yeah. like Eric, you went into this next GDD, you added the character, you added the character, right? Characters the story, the theme, mm -hmm. but you did it from a high level overview because once you actually get into making the game, things can change. Things might connect together. They might not connect. You know, it, it all depends on how the game's right. flung at that point in time. So, you know, whatever we talk about in this episode, you know, it comes down to keeping it a high level being, you know, pretty flexible because things will change. Right. You, right. You want, and then, yeah, I was just, I was just going to say you want to, you know, Bring in multiple eyes. Get multiple eyes on the, the GDD. Right. And, you know, part of the collaborative effort that we do is, you know, as we're going through phase one, phase two, because that's how we, we sort of break things down into chunks, manageable chunks. Um, as we're going through those, we can write more descriptive GDD sections. So that basically... You know, once something is decided upon, be it character movement or controls or, you know, the way a system works with percentages and numbers and all its values, you can then put those into the GDD to sort of cement them in place, which then, you know, again, if somebody's working on something and they need to refer back, they can just open up that document and look. They don't have to, you know, be like, oh, did he say that that's going to be, you know, 10 health or 15 health it's like basically covering your butt as you go yeah that's a very important so. piece of it because <laughs> when you first go through the first iteration your team is not going to remember everything you've talked about from the first to like the 10th iteration right so as a team is designing the game it is very beneficial that if they have a question and they need to know which route they're supposed to take they can refer to the gdd Right, the GDD is the mission, vision, and values of what the game can be. Right, so like as as you right. refer back to your your business plan for the overall business, you refer back to the GDD when you're building the game. You know that's that's honestly the best way that I can put it. Right, you you want it. Yeah, that's a good yeah, parallel. You, you want it to be a road that the team knows to follow. Right. But there's going to be certain blocks on the way, certain things that they need to figure out how to get across. You know, they're going to have to refer back to where they originally started and and use the GDD to continue their path forward. That's just what it's going to be, and this is going to come down to gameplay too, like what the player is expecting, the goals, right? Goals and objectives for the game. Like all of this should, like Eric and I are saying, should be there from a high level overview. And then as you progress, then you narrow down into the details. Then you really start to hone in and hit the details so that everybody from a team perspective is on the same page. Right. So, you know, it, it's it's with anything when you're designing a game, right? You, I mean, you're going to have probably power-ups, right? Different items to collect. I, I'll go back to the assets, like I said before. The game mechanics, the progressions, the challenges. Everything that you want to add in your game, I'm telling you from a high-level standpoint, like it should be talked to in your GDD. So, like, everybody's GDD is going to be different, right? However, it should have the core. The core should be the same. The core should be the same. You should understand what it is you're making, right? What you want the player to feel. Who Who is even the player? Like, who are you targeting? 
right? Like, what what is this particular game going to be good for? Who is it going to be good for, right, in terms of players um, and what they should expect, right? Like, there's a lot of things that Eric and I have talked to uh, in this episode already that, you know, you can take away and use for your own game design document. So... What would you say, Eric, uh, do you think it's the same in terms of like art style, trying to get that message across? I know we talked visually. Um, yeah, so what I have started doing for that sort of uh, section of a GDD is actually gather references and kind of do a general, you know, these are the references I'm pulling from for the way that the camera is set or the way that an asset is laid out in a environment or a color scheme. And then as I create the assets, I'll again, I'll backfill into the GDD so that, you know, the, everybody can kind of see and make sure that you're maintaining a visual style the whole way through. Because as we, like, as we went through storm sales, I got better at, and we talked about this in a previous episode, I got better at making ships but then I had to basically go backwards and say, no, this is too much detail compared to some of the early stuff that I had done. So keeping track and staying on a visual course is definitely something that can be achieved in the GDD as well by basically making note of where you've been. Right. And along these lines... Another, like an optional PC you don't necessarily have to have, but you should have a roadmap if you're going to go this route, is you should understand like your marketing and your funding. If you're going to crowdsource, for example, like Eric, we had talked about doing a Kickstarter for this next game, and you had Mm -hmm. made that a part of the presentation, you made that a part of the GDD that we went over. And, you know, that to me is beneficial because we're planning to do that, right? We're planning to use this game as a kickstart with it and to crowdfund for the company, for the game, you know, so on and so right. forth. If somebody plans to do that, they plan to, you know, launch it on like steam. They, they're trying to green light it, or maybe they want to go to like switch or they want to shoot for, you know, Xbox, um, PlayStation, you know, console release. Like you should know this should all be in your DVD. And, and this is because it's a roadmap, right? It's a roadmap from a high level perspective right. of what you want to create and where you want to go. And I, I, Eric, you had put that in there, right? You, you had talked about releasing on um, PC and then if time, energy, mm-hmm. morale permits, we shoot for console. Right. And that's just so that it's in the back of our brain the whole time. And same way with marketing and a Kickstarter. As long as we know that it's something that we want to do you can kind of plan for that along the way so that you're not like you know 10 months down the road or whatever and it's like oh hey let's start marketing this thing like that's just not gonna be useful to anybody on the team because it's gonna you know you're gonna throw off the workflow you're gonna be scrambling to try and gather the proper materials so it's just easiest to plan for it at the beginning and then slowly work up to it. Right. And one thing you don't necessarily have to have is like the name of your game. Um, unless you are trying to protect the IP, which we've talked about, protecting the IP is very important. But if you're like super small and you don't necessarily know what the game needs, like what the name of it needs to be rated out of the gate, that's fine. You don't need to include it. You could just call it whatever you want to, a project of some sort. Um, and it's the same thing with like the executive summary. Like I would work through the whole, or at least most of the GDDs. So you lay out like exactly what you want to do. You know what path you're trying to take, and then you come back, write the executive summary. And if you have people to present it to, like a team, like we did, Eric, like you you did, um, you know, then you condense it into a, a visually appealing presentation, such as PowerPoint, and you go and pitch it to the rest of the team. Right, and then the ideas start to flow. So, you know, yep. other than that, man, I don't really have anything else I would say in terms of a, a GDD. You know, you, you have everything that we've talked about in this episode is vital at some stage of the game for building your GDD. Right. So, 
And there are examples out there. You can go and find... It's it's like a resume, almost, just kind of in reverse. You you can go find how people play in their games. You can develop your own GDED, like we sort of did. We kind of have our own flow for them now. Right. Um, but that came from just researching, you know, different games, like their design doc- documents. So, um, well, people... It's just something that... It's really useful to have. Right. And people know, listening and watching this, just, like now they understand like what they need to include. Right. Because every visually it's gonna be different. Like everybody's gonna be different. Um, but oh, from definitely. from a contextual like meat and potatoes type of situation, you know what you should include. Right. Right. Alright man, did you have anything else that you would like to say talking about the GDD? Um, not off the top of my head, you know, we kept this one, uh, since it's in its early stages, we kept it really high level, which we talked about. And then, you know, as we go, we will refine it and, you know, we'll do some development updates and devlogs to kind of keep everybody in the loop. But I think that that could be something that we talk about in the future is, you know, refining your GDD and getting it to be what you need for production right. the first revision will not be the last so thank you for taking the time to listen no. <laughs> we hope that you found a lot of value in today's episode if you would like to follow us and you would like to follow more along with our gdd and dive deeper into the world of game development you can do so on our patreon the link will be in the description um, as well you can follow us on social media at nebulos underscore ent on all the big platforms instagram facebook pinterest twitter uh, you know, above all, remember that there is a story in all of us, but it's up to you to choose how you write yours. Have a good night.